Welcome to the wood turning workshop. You know, as turners, we have a tendency to make the most artistic thing we can think of, something we can put in a gallery. You know, the more useless, the better. Well, today we're going to make something useful. We're going to make a rolling pin, and we're going to base it off of this antique that I have. It's almost 100 years old. Should be a fun and challenging project. Stay tuned. Before we get started on today's project, I want to show you something that I always do before I turn. I want all the components of the lathe to move smoothly. So I take a metal lubricant spray and I spray the ways of the bed with it. Then I take the banjo, slide it around so it gets lubricated also. A little more spray, be generous with this. Slide the tailstock and move it back and forth till it's sliding smoothly also. And don't forget the tool rest. Spray the post, and now this will move up and down very smoothly. If you have any dings or any grime on your tool rest, take a piece of sandpaper and lightly rub across it, and that helps smooth it out. Then top it off with some paste wax to make the surface even smoother. There's a lot of things you're going to learn from today's project, but I think the most important thing is that we're going to keep alive a century-old design and I love to preserve history and I think paying homage to a turner from the past is a wonderful thing and you can see this is held up beautifully and that's because the turner made a very good choice of wood maple the wood we're using today is walnut and what they have in common is they're both hard woods and they can hold up to a lot of wear and tear we're gonna start by marking the center of the blank by drawing a straight line from corner to corner on each end Then using a punch, make a dimple to mark the center points. Now drive a four-pronged center into one end. Take the blank, put it into the headstock, bring the tailstock up, and that dimple you made will center up the point on the live center. I've got my tool rest height set to the center line of the blank. And I'm bringing this up, bring it back a little bit there so it doesn't hit when it rotates. I'm also making sure that the tool rest is parallel with the bed of the lathe, not the blank. The blank could be out around, and this guarantees me a straight line. I also have some overhang here so when I cut, I don't go off the tool rest. Get your eye protection on, grab your roughing gouge, and start the lathe at a slow speed, and then bring it up. Bring the tool in until the bevel starts to rub, then raise the handle and you'll see it start cutting. Once it starts cutting, just use short strokes and work your way towards the end of the blank. You want to make short strokes as you begin because you're cutting the corners of the wood off right now. If you took a long stroke, you could peel the piece of wood and it could fly off. Now the same thing could happen if you started from the end and worked your way towards the center. So again, take short strokes and work your way from the center towards the end. Okay, that's about as far as I can go right now. I'm running out of tool rest. So we'll take everything, slide it over to my left, spin the blank, see if it's going to hit. Make sure that this is parallel with the bed. 
It looks good. I've left a little overhang because we're going to be going this direction now. Now, we're ready to get our first measurement, and that is going to be the largest diameter of the rolling pin, which is the barrel. We're going to take our calipers, get the measurement, and then, with our parting tool, we're going to transfer this diameter to the blank. Remember, when you're using a parting tool, always make a relief cut. That way the tool won't get pinched by the wood. There, we got our first diameter transferred. Now we're going to do that several places along the blank. There. Now the reason I mark this in several places is it makes it a lot easier for me now to take the roughing gouge and make a perfect cylinder. And now we want to just take long smooth strokes and remove the wood until the grooves are gone. Now, before we go any further, I want to put a nice fresh edge on my roughing gouge.
Now, more than ever, proper tool technique is important. You want to leave as smooth and straight a surface on here as possible. Make sure that your tool rest is perfectly parallel with the lathe of the bed. Also, make sure that you have your feet staggered, so as you shift your weight, you wind up on balance at the end of the cut. And take your tool handle and bring it into your side. That way it's tight, you don't have any of this going on. You're going to also take your left hand, bring up your index finger underneath the lip of the tool rest, pinch this with your fingers, and that keeps it from moving into the piece. So you can set your depth, almost like a depth gauge. Everything's locked in and tight, and I'm going to take a very light cut. Move to the other end, and make sure you move the tool slowly. Now we're going to lay out the shape of the rolling pin. This is about a 15 inch rolling pin, and the blank I've got is about 16 inches. There's the end of the barrel right there. There's about a quarter inch wide shoulder right here. Here's the high spot on the handle. There's the low spot center about there. And there's that end. Now we'll move over here. Gonna mark the end of the barrel here. There's my shoulder. There's the low spot. There's a high spot. And there's the end of the handle there. Earlier when we used our calipers and our parting tool, we had one diameter. Now we have three. I wanna cut down to the shoulder, the low part of the handle, and the high part of the handle. Now that I have my diameters marked, I'm going to remove the excess wood with my large parting tool. I'm using my spindle gouge, and you can see I remarked my transition points, and I'm going to make my cuts going from high to low to make the handle.
The shape of the handle is simple. It's a bead and a cove, but we have to blend the two together to make it work. Now I need to remove a little bit of wood with my parting tool so I can start shaping the end of the handle. Now to finish refining the end of the tool handle, we're going to take our skew chisel and make a V-cut. Make sure you have the long point down. Raise the handle while pushing the tool straight into the wood. This is how you start a V-cut. Now bring the tool to the left while slightly tilting the chisel to the left. Raise the handle and push the tool into the wood again. If you lean the tool to the right, it'll skip off the wood and not make a cut. As you can see, the tip of the tool makes a cut and the bevel is rubbing the entire time. Now go to the right side and repeat the same steps. Keep doing this until you remove all but about a half inch of the wood. Then move to the other handle and repeat all the same steps. Use your parting tool to remove the excess wood. Use your spindle gouge to refine and shape the handle. and your skew chisel to finish the end of the handle. Now it's time to sand. We're going to start with 150 grit and work our way up through 320. Remember your breathing protection. Make sure you slow your lathe down so you don't build up heat. Also keep the paper moving and just slightly round over some of those sharp edges. We're not quite done yet. This rolling pin is going to be exposed to water when it's washed and that's going to raise the grain. So we want to prevent that in the future. If the grain raises up, it becomes soft and fuzzy feeling. So we're going to raise the grain in advance. We're going to use mineral oil and coat it liberally. That will raise the grain. Then we're going to take 320 grit sandpaper and re-sand it.
Nice thing about sanding now, no dust. Now I'm going to speed the lathe up and take some beeswax and melt it into the surface of the wood. I'm going to come back and buff it in with a paper towel and this will leave a beautiful finish. Now a trip to the bandsaw to cut off the excess wood. And a little bit of hand sanding and we'll seal the ends with oil and beeswax. Well here's our finished rolling pin. Turned out beautifully. This walnut grain is just neat to work with. It's gorgeous wood. But what I really like is that we preserved a nearly century old design from a turner who came before us. Preserving history is something I really like to do. Now, I'm going to test this out though. We're going to make some of my wife's sugar cookies and I'll share her secret recipe with you. Good enough? Okay, got it. Okay. Now, remember when you're looking around the kitchen and you want inspiration, there are many things that you're going to find that you can turn on the lathe. All you have to do is open your eyes and look a bit. Well, we're going to need some flour and, oh look, we have a wooden scoop. Amazing. I bet you could make one of these on the lathe pretty easily, like this one. And spread around that flour a little bit so we can put our dough on here. Hey, wooden bowl, how did that happen? So that's handy to have too. Now, we're going to spread this dough out a little bit and use our new rolling pin to do it. Oh, she drives beautifully. I like it. Oop, going to need a little more flour. That way it won't stick. That's better. Hey, who says real men don't cook? Or me either, for that matter. A little more flour here. Actually, my extent of cooking usually is limited to something that involves a microwave. Yeah, the first turning cooking show on television, by the way. Anyway, I want to get this flattened out enough that we can cut some cookies out. And that's looking pretty good. You notice the wooden, turn, uh, wooden cutting board I'm using too. I couldn't turn one, but it's nice to have one. There, that looks good and thin, but let's see. What will we use for the cookie cutter? Oh my, a cookie cutter made of wood. If you remember a few shows back, we made this. So let's test this out. Oh, that's gorgeous. There's one, do a few more. This works out really nicely. And the air holes that we put in here, if you remember, that's why the cookie dough is releasing and not sticking up inside. Cut the rest of these out and a little bit of oven time and we'll be eating some sugar cookies. Mmm, cookies! And you didn't think I could cook. <clears throat> anyway, oh look! a wooden platter. You know, if you keep your eyes open, like I said, look around the kitchen, you're going to find a lot of things that you can turn. Now, to go with my cookies, I think I need a frothy beverage, but what would I hold it? Oh, a wooden goblet. How convenient. Well, until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep cooking and turning. Mmm. Mmm. What? Keep home? Oh, cookie.